the Mobile County Public School System presents Homeroom with Nancy Pierce. Hello and welcome to Homeroom. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. We are in the midst of the holiday season and you know what that means? Most of us eat way too much, at least I know I do and maybe you do too. Well, we can eat healthy and we can have fun with our children in the kitchen, having them help us make things, just all sorts of things. And to help us with that is Suzanne Yates. She is the director of our child nutrition program. Good to have you back. It's always fun to have you here. I was fun to be back. And you've got a beautiful Christmas tree yes. pin. I love Time it. Time for Christmas. You, you are ready. I think I am. Are Just you? Gotta get that food going now. Get the food going. And it, it, it is a hard time because it's so much fun to have all the cakes and the cookies and the fudge and the. Oh, no. And you know what? With that comes a bunch of weight, too. Yeah. You can gain. The average person might gain around five to seven pounds during the holidays. That doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do that every year and you don't take it off, in five years, you got 25 to 30 something extra pounds on sure. you. Sure. So well, I, I know I that's gained easy three to do. over Thanksgiving. So uh, that's part of your seven. So you only got four more left to go. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, darn. What am I going to cut out? I know. But we, it really is a difficult time because um, children are off. They aren't at school. And so right. they're home a lot more during the day and they get hungry. When you're home, I think you tend to munch more and things like that. So how can we all, adults, children, um, what can we do to help ourselves so we don't have to worry about that five to seven pounds? If you gain a pound, maybe okay, but five to seven, mm, that's tough. Well, well, some of the things is during the holidays, your schedule is pretty much off. Because mm -hmm. like if, you're, if the kids are at home, they're sleeping later, they probably stay it up later and it's just all different types. Your routine gets off of, uh, you know, off of balance. And so one of the things that you might want to try to eat some type of breakfast because that's really important. Uh, having breakfast in the morning helps to break the fast. It also kickstarts your metabolism so that way you're actually burning up better calories, that type of thing. Another thing too is having some protein during the day. Protein. With your breakfast, should you with have your, it breakfast, with your breakfast? Yeah. Is that good? And it just helps to keep you satisfied a little bit longer, and it takes you a little bit harder to actually break down the protein, and so your metabolism is working better. Right, you're burning more calories. Also, if you can exercise some, whether it's just to take a short walk somewhere or just something different that would be any type of exercise is good, just moving. And then also to increase your fiber, to have more whole grains and things like that in your diet. That's real helpful. Those are like four good tips that just looking through, you know, there's a, a whole wealth of information out there like on the internet and stuff, but just looking at some of the articles and things like mm -hmm. that, those types of things are just really important to try to do. Also, um, having plenty of uh, fluids, but I would suggest more water and those types of things. Not a lot of juice, not a lot of alcoholic beverages if you're an adult or that type of thing. Uh, not a lot of sodas and things like that. And whenever you think of the holidays, you have a lot of punches and things like oh, that, yeah. that you might have hot apple cider, which is all fruit-based mm. juices. You might have different types of punches, that kind of stuff that you'll make for parties. Right. Also, you'll tend to have, um, a lot of people will just get sodas because that's easy to do and you'll have a lot of regular soda and that type of stuff. Like, uh, whether it's like 7-Up or Sprite or something like that, or even just Coke, you tend to drink a little bit more of that during the holidays. And then also, too, if it's an alcoholic beverage, that does uh, add a lot of calories. Too. A lot of calories. Mm -hmm. It definitely does. And, you know, going back to the sodas, because a lot, of, a lot of children and adults drink soda, whether they are the regular soda or diets. And I know that the regular soda, I, I think a 12-ounce can or... I think that's how big they are. What about 80, 90, 100 calories? No, it's about 150 calories 150. For, a 12, for a 12 ounce Coke is 150 oh. calories. So you're talking about eight ounces would be about your 75 okay. 80 calories, but 150 calories and that's just sugar. And that's that just, just one. And if you yeah. are an avid Coke it's or Pepsi drink drinker, you could do a, a thousand. Pack. Sure. Yeah. It's easy to drink a six pack of Coke in, in a day. And if you're just drinking that you know just same thing as with diet soda oh, i've done it before i've drank a six pack of diet soda in a day and that's easy to do sure uh if that's what you're mainly just drinking but then with all the diet sodas and stuff one of the things is you've got like the phosphorus and stuff that's not good 
for your bones. Right. And then also with just the um, artificial sweeteners and stuff, there's a lot of uh, controversy out there as right. to whether they're good or bad or whatever, and it affects people different ways. I just read uh, in some magazine that diet sodas are really hard on your waistline and not be, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it's not the calories because there aren't any, but for some reason there's something that makes your way, that affects I think your it's waistline some of somehow. The trigger mechanisms of the metabolism and all the hormones that we have. Uh -huh. And I can't really tell you exactly, but it does, it does affect your does waistline affect that you tend to eat other foods and it compensates for different things. And, you know, and I'm, I'd be talking out of line with trying to really get specific on it, yeah. but it does affect your waistline. And um, a lot of things can affect your waistline. One of the things too is like whenever, uh, besides all the beverages, is all the uh, things that we might be making extra. Oh, I like know. Like candies and cookies and things like that. Those and, are all wonderful things to have. And and the, the another thing that goes with this is, let's talk about cookies. A lot of women, I'm not sure any of the guys do this, will have, a cookie party where if you have 10 women there, you bake, I think, 10 dozen cookies or something, and oh. then you share, and so you get some of each type. Well, if you do that, you take all these cookies home, it's really hard to say no. It is, it is. And one of the things with the cookie, I'm planning a cookie party. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing it for, this is our 21st year to have this cookie oh party gosh. that we've been doing it. and. Um, you get all these different really great cookie recipes and stuff. One of the things is to actually, if you can uh, take and make sure that you only limit yourself to so many cookies yeah, at a time. Right. That time, it's hard to do, <laughs> to do that. And then uh, whenever you bake your cookies to make them a little bit more healthier. And there's some tips that you can have to make healthier cookies. And, and it sort of goes- And tasty on, cookies? And tasty cookies, Healthy yes. and tasty. Taste, healthy and tasty. I didn't think those two words went together. Sometimes okay. they do. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things is just with the type of ingredients that you're using. Now, keep in mind that baking is a science that you got to have the right balance of mm -hmm. ingredients or else you're going to have something that just doesn't taste good mm -hmm. or that the product doesn't come out like it's supposed to. A lot of people might try to take and replace fats like your oils and things like that with fruit purees in which like if you're baking cake, Apple you sauce. can actually, yeah, substitute applesauce for some of the oil. Now, I would not substitute applesauce for the entire amount, amount of the oil because of just the uh, basic chemistry of it. You'd have a real, real moist cake and it'd probably all fall apart. Uh -huh. There's something with the fat and the oils that helps sort of keep it together, gives it a different texture. But you can um, combine the two. Use you, some of the oil, some of the applesauce. Sauce. And you can get a happy medium with it. Right. Uh, just like with uh, some cookies and things like, or just little well, cakes too, with the flour that you use. If you're not using a cake mix, but you're actually making it from right. scratch, act, instead of having the white flour, actually add whole wheat flour. But you can't add the whole the amount whole of whole wheat flour, but you can add maybe like a fourth of it whole wheat or, or half of it. Okay. Another thing too is like to take rolled oats and actually pass them through the food processor to where it's nearly like a flour. Right. And you could substitute some of that flour for uh, with, with the whole oats or whatever. Did, have you ever done that? Because I have tried a little bit. Yeah. And you got to be careful as to how much you how actually much you replace in. because yeah. it will change the texture oh, of sure. the product because it could be drier, it could be more crumbly. Right. It uh, it may taste too weedy because if you think of whole wheat breads, mm -hmm. whenever you eat a slice of white bread and then you eat a slice of whole wheat bread, it's a totally different flavor. They're both good products. And texture. And texture. Yeah. But so you got to be careful about that with all of your um, different types of products and stuff like that. I remember in our college a few years back, um, we did the food experiment class, uh -huh. and I tried to change, use honey rather than sugar right. in a product. And one of the things that's with that honey is a liquid, and so it was the proportion that you had to get to get it just right, or else your product would fail. Oh, sure. That would. So. I think that would be a hard part. We have to take a break right now, but stay okay. with us, and you stay with us, and we'll be right back with more cooking in the kitchen. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die uh, each year. Have. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. 
We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you gonna do in future life, and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life, and so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. And welcome back to Homeroom. I'm Nancy Pierce, and joining me is Suzanne Yates. She is over our child nutrition program at the Mobile County Public School System. We're talking food. Who doesn't like to talk food? I don't know. It's always interesting to talk about food. You know, sometimes I think when I just talk about food, or maybe I look at a carrot cake, or I look at something, that it puts five pounds on my hips. I, now, I know it doesn't, but unless I eat it. It could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, had, we had talked before about how, you know, eat in moderation. Don't eat. 10 cookies, eat one cookie, and unless I have one cookie, <laughs> that's the only way it's I can do that. It's hard not to eat the whole bunch I know, that's just there, I just know. picking on them, break a little piece, break a little piece, that type of thing. One of the things, um, like if you are going to a party or mm -hmm. something like that, such as like the cookie exchange that right. we talked about earlier, is to try to drink some water or something before you go, have a little snack, maybe with some protein or something, so you're not starving going to the party and uh, just any party you're going to. Right. And uh, just sort of watch the types of beverages that you have, if they have, and it's just to make that, uh, you know, choice mm -hmm. of how much you want to have. If there's always the uh, choice of water, it's good to at least have one glass of water and then have your other beverage after that. So that way you sort of stretching it out some. Well, I think um, I've, always, I've always heard that before any, any meal, especially dinner, go ahead and drink maybe a glass of water first or, you know, just to kind of make yourself feel a little full. A little bit fuller. Yeah. And then also it takes you about 20 minutes for your brain to register that you are full. And that's where the problem is. If you're a quick eater or if you can, you can consume a lot of stuff in 20 minutes. You sure can. And so uh, that's one of the things is have some type of snack to where you're not starving whenever you get to the party. But then also if you can moderate yourself to where you just sort of take in a little bit and then come back a little bit later to where you're not hanging out right at the food table. Don't graze. Don't be a no. grazer. That's it. You could graze a whole oh, you, Yeah, uh, a and a whole calories. lot of calories. And one, some of the things that we do prepare at during you know, Christmas time or whatever, the holidays, anytime, you tend to use more of the regular, like, cream cheese rather than the reduced fat mm -hmm. cream cheese. Uh, you will use more butter rather than margarines. Um, you'll use more sugar rather than maybe cutting back on some of the sugar. Some of the items that we have, we tend to just go full-fledged with them because it's the holidays. Sure. And so you want to do that. And you want to make sure it tastes really good. But there are just ways that you can cut back a little bit. And we mentioned about like using fruit purees with uh, in replacement of flat, uh, fat and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Also with your flowers, you can try different types of flowers or where you're actually increasing the fiber of it. Uh, adding like instead of chocolate chips, adding dried fruit like your raisins, like you said, oatmeal raisin. Well, you know, you eat an oatmeal raisin cookie, isn't that he healthy? <laughs> Well, it does have some I guess it's good, healthier good than, fiber. than not having the oatmeal, oatmeal and the raisins. Right. But also, it depends, too, on what size cookies are you making. Are you making these huge cookies or are you going to make smaller cookies? If you can make smaller cookies, that's even better because you get more cookies <laughs> you know, in your recipe. <laughs> and then you'll eat more. Spread the wealth with that. Well, what about with kids? Because we really, you know, it's a time when you think they might be outside more. But depending on the weather, if it's cold, if it's rainy, they're going to be inside. They're going to be in front of their computer. They're going to be playing games. And, and all of a sudden, they're eating all of this, too. Yeah. Well, one of the things, too, is that's a good time to actually get them to participate in prepare, pre preparing the food. Mm -hmm. And in the preparation of the food, 
You can also try different types of things like having more fruits and things like that on hand. Like now you can even buy those little kits like your edible fruit arrangements. Right. You can buy those little kits and maybe cut fruit in different shapes and actually do like arrangements with fruit and have a fruit tray or that type of thing. I saw that. That's There's neat. ways that you can, you know, have other or do things with vegetables and that type of stuff. Um, just watch out for the dressings like have, you know, your ranch dressing is very popular, that type of thing, but go with the lower fat fat ranch dressing, those types of things. And there's all kinds of ways, but I think if you can as a family sit together and or work together in the kitchen and preparing things, uh -huh. it makes it more fun as to trying new things, like picking out a certain kind of fruit or maybe even looking at the flowers and stuff that you have of what type of, you want whole wheat flour, white flour, you know, there's potato flour, rice right. flour, there's all different kinds of things and trying different types of things uh, to make recipes and stuff. And also just eating together, the, you know, facts have proven that a uh, family that eats together, you know, does much better together just as a whole with sure. learning about what's going on and talking about exercise and maybe actually doing exercise as a family of going out for a walk or something like that. Oh, those are all wonderful ideas. And I know when I think about children eating together or well, families eating together, I don't think it happens much anymore. And I know when, when, when I grew up and, and when you grew up probably, um, you eat as a family. We, we, right. had, we always ate dinner together. Always, and mm -hmm. um, of course now with kids are so busy that they just don't seem to eat together as a family, and a lot of it is fast food. Maybe a lot of, um, during the holidays, you won't eat as much fast food because you do have more time, maybe. Right, right. And hopefully uh, during the holidays we do cut out some of the fast foods because those really do have a lot of calories whenever they're frying things. Mm -hmm. It's just all those extra calories that you have there, and you can eat you know, it, it, the calories just really, really add up. And I, but I, the good thing about a lot of the fast food restaurants now is they are offering salads and they're offering, you know, apple slices and things like that. Right. If your child will choose that instead okay. of. Well, one of the interesting things is a lot of your fast food restaurants do have the calories listed on the menu yes. boards. And that, I've taken note of that and I'm looked like, okay, well, I can get 200 less calories by just selecting this other option without getting all the extra stuff on it. And it, that, that makes a big difference. Just cutting out even a few calories can make a difference over the long run. Oh, sure. It takes 3,500 calories to make a pound. So anytime... It sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot. But it doesn't... But it doesn't <laughs> take much to add up 3,500 calories. Whenever you think of some sandwiches are six and 700 calories. Right. And so 3,500 extra calories makes a pound and it doesn't take very much. Because whenever you think about little pieces of say fudge, those types oh. of things that's made with butter and sugar uh -huh. and all that kind of stuff and sweetened condensed milk and that whole milk and that kind of thing because it's got a lot of fat in there. Yeah. So a little old piece of fudge has a ton of calories. I'm sure it must be over 100 something calories sure. for a little piece. And it's very difficult to eat just one. Right, but you don't want to you don't you don't want to deprive yourself during the whole time. No, you know. Otherwise, when if you decide you are going to treat yourself, you might really overdo. I think that that can happen. You know, if you right. say no, I'm not. I'm going to be good uh, the whole week, and then all of a sudden Saturday comes and you kind of fall off the wagon basically, and instead of having one piece of fudge, you eat a half a pan. Right, but then if you do eat the half a pan of fudge, <laughs> don't beat yourself up for right. it. Right. You want to get back on your routine and uh -huh. stuff. And that's why we have, thank God, we're just off for a couple okay. of weeks and then we get back to our routine again. And so that's where we make New Year's resolutions and stuff. Hopefully we can keep them. Keep them. But you do want to be realistic during the holidays to make sure that you do have a variety of foods, but then also just watching what you eat and um, eat in moderation. That's the whole thing is just oh, having know. it in moderation. Definitely. Good information. We have one more break. We'll be right back. So you stay put. Okay. And you stay put, and we'll see you in just a minute. I transferred to Biger High School halfway through my sophomore year, and the curriculum there, the instructors, teachers, uh, the whole thing was just a shock to me. Uh, at Biger, uh, you were encouraged to critically think, and so uh, I was just uh, well grounded to move on into college football and then on into the NFL. Well, for me, Biker High School was the start. It's where I started and I'm very proud of that. 
I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it can cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. You don't have to be perfect that. to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Homeroom. I'm Nancy Pierce. We are talking about food, which is something I think we all like to talk about. And joining me today is Suzanne Yates. She works with the, the Children's Child's Nutrition Program. She's headed that for the Mobile County Public School System and has done such an incredible job. Um, with the schools and with our lunches and breakfasts. And now we're talking about the holidays because kids will be out of school. Uh, parents might take some time off work and, and you've got all this food you wanna eat, all this food you wanna make, and then you gain five pounds and then you say, oh no, what am I gonna do? You make a New Year's resolution and in about two weeks, you say, oh, forget Let's it. Forget <laughs> it, that's right, that's right. Well, one of the things that, um, with cooking, I, I did get some things off the internet uh, before this. Great resource. Yeah, it's a, it is a great resource. And uh, I ha like I have a friend that she does a lot of cooking, uh -huh. and whether it's uh, baking or just meals or whatever. And she never has all the ingredients that are in the recipe. So she's always doing <laughs> substitutions. And you can do substitutions. Okay. Whether it's, uh, say, like if you are out of buttermilk, right? how do you get something that's buttermilk? And you can use, like, milk and lemon juice. And or vinegar. You, or vinegar, mm -hmm. yes. It's just the acid, and then you have the milk just to make it, like, sour. And so there's all kinds of things. And I was really surprised. This is about 10 or 12 pages of just substitutions wow. that you can do. Some may be actually changing the amount of calories or fat or something in the recipe, and some may be that you just don't have that ingredient, but you want the same product, and so what can I do to get that ingredient? Mm -hmm. um, an example, we were talking uh, over the break about uh, hummus. Oh, I love hummus. And hummus is a really good product. It's a good source of protein because mm -hmm. you're using beans, right. good source of fiber. Uh, you're using olive oil, which is a good oil in right. there. And then you have what they call is tahini that you use, and that's an almond paste. And um, one of the things, or it's sesame, it's, I think it's almond paste, whatever. Uh, one of the things with tahini is not everybody has tahini. No. And it's hard to find tahini. Yeah. One of the things that you can substitute for tahini is peanut butter. Oh, really? If you don't have any kind of peanut allergies, you can use peanut butter in it. Much less expensive because a little jar of tahini will be five or six dollars. You can get a whole. You'll, uh, a lot of people have peanut, peanut butter. butter on hand, sure, unless you're actually allergic to peanut butter. Yeah, definitely. But tahini, I use peanut butter, butter instead. Home. But it, and, oh, does it tell you if you go online and, and and look for the substitutions? Will it tell you? Okay, if you need a tablespoon of tahini, this is how much peanut butter you use. Yes, it does. Oh, okay, okay. Because I, I would hate to guess because Cause, no, it's like peanut butter. Uh, one one cup of peanut butter, a cup of uh, oh, it's, it's sesame paste. It's, oh, okay. it's not almond paste. It's sesame paste. It's tahini, but just a cup. It's a cup for a cup. Oh, okay. Um, there were some other things I know. Uh, in here is like with the sugar and the honey. Um, let me find a oh, maple syrup. Uh, two cups. You would for two cups of maple syrup, you'd only use one cup of honey, honey as okay. a substitute. Yeah, because so it gives you the proportions. And then it talked about in here. Well, this one thing about substitution is like with the flour. Don't uh, change more than half of the whole white the white flour with right. the whole wheat flour. Okay, that type of thing. So it's really important. You don't think of it as a science, but it is a oh, science. Oh, it definitely it is. It just makes a, a difference. Like some people think they can bake with sugar substitutes. Okay. If you're using the pink, like the sweet and low, right. that is not uh, heat tolerant. Oh, so okay. it'll actually break down and your food will taste Ooh. nasty. Oh. Uh, now you have like, um, oh, uh, like stevia, right. and then you have Splenda, those types of things. 
those the sweeteners you can use them in baking mm -hmm. and so you'd have to be careful about those types of things like if it's aspartame like equal right not good for baking because right. it just doesn't hold up to the heat mm -hmm. now if you want to add the equal like in the very last part of the process that it's not actually going to be going through it uh heating, heat. it heating it up for a long period of time it would be okay to use right. that but sometimes just you'd have to try those things but then again all these ingredients once you start you know you don't want to mess up a whole no. bunch of flour or no. sugar or something like that because all of that can get expensive. Well, I know the, the the Truvia and Truvia. the other, the, um, they're very, uh, you know, I, I can't remember the what it is, but, you know, you it's so much more powerful, powerful than sugar. Than yeah. sugar. The and so you, <laughs> if you needed a tablespoon of sugar and you use a tablespoon, a tablespoon of one of the others, stevia or whatever, you would have way too It'd much It would be really sugar. too sweet. Right. And right. then also is the stevia liquid, is the sugar, whatever. Uh, just like if somebody uses brown sugar and white sugar or raw sugar, mm -hmm. there's all different types of uh, combinations. So you need to be careful about what are you su actually substituting it So don't for. guess. Don't guess. You can find something on the internet that will say substitutions that will give you what the, the correct uh, amount and and what will work and what won't work and you know thinking of of that whole aspect all of a sudden you can bring in a great math lesson with your children yes and, and you maybe sure can. you could kind of couch it so they won't even think that they're learning math but, but they are yes and it's just like if you're doubling a recipe or tripling a recipe some things can be doubled or tripled other recipes cannot because of just the the way that the product comes out like if you're doing um meringues and things like yeah. that oh, you don't you want you can only do little batches at a time because if you try to do too big of a batch then after that it may just fail oh okay um some other recipes like um i learned this the other day in a little class that we were in with using herbs if you have a recipe you don't necessarily want to triple the herbs if you're tripling the recipe because of just the potency of right them. you may have to cut back a little bit on those herbs and spices also too like if you're making your own salad dressings which is real popular to do sure. or marinades right uh if you're using like a vinegar usually just like a third vinegar amount of vinegar to have uh two more times is oil that type of stuff there's certain proportions that you want to use whenever you're actually making these salad dressings to where the vinegar and oil will be in the correct proportion. The correct proportion. So there's a lot of things that you can do, like um, with some of the salad dressings, I find if you add like mustard to some of them, uh -huh. it actually helps to keep the emulsion uh, in, you know, to where it's not separating as right. bad and sure. stuff like that. So there's all kinds of things wow. that you can do. That is too it cool. is, it's literally it's a it's an experiment it is it's an, an experiment and, and, I, and I love to, to bring the children into it because then they can be involved in the whole thing and understand that you know you really do have to be careful you have to figure it out ahead of time I know sometimes I've doubled a recipe and I'll think did I double that did I double everything or did I not double everything? Right, right. And so, you know, you, if you're baking with one of your kids, they can keep track. Write it down. Okay, mom, you used two, you doubled your sugar, you do, doubled your flour. Wait a minute, I don't think you doubled your baking yeah. soda or whatever. Also, another thing is like preheating your oven. Uh huh. If you're going to be baking cookies and stuff, you want your cookie stuff to be going in at 350 degrees or whatever it is. Right. You don't want to just start turn the oven on whenever you put the cookies in. So you want to make sure that your temperature is correct. So there's some things, you know, there's just little things you got to think it about. It is a science. Yes. And we are out of time and you've made me very hungry anyway. So thank you so much for this. Thank and you. I think if, uh, this will be great for the kids and for parents. So thank you and come back. I sure will. All right. And thank you for watching and for listening.